For the Apple OS X operating system, there exists a comparable application to Notepad++ with customizable markup capabilities called Smoltron. Versions exist for most OS X platform types and it can be found at the link posted in the slide. Within the Extreme XOS operating system, there are a few Linux-like commands that will become important when you're dealing with Extreme XOS scripting. First one listed here is LS, which is directory listing. Directory listing, you can list internal memory, you can list memory cards, and you can list file names that match wildcards. There are some limitations, internal memory and CF flash only, and no file name listings with wildcards. An example listed there, you can't list file name dot star. This is a screen capture of a directory listing. It's a directory listing off of an Extreme XOS switch, and as you can see, there are a few files on there to show that it's listing the files. We have some .xsf, some .cfg, and a .pull. Those represent quickly identifying some scripts, some configuration files, and a policy file. The CP command, or copy. This is also important for a couple of reasons. You can cop copy files to local flash or use USB. You can copy to another file name, so copy file name.xsf to file name .back.xsf. So when you're doing edits on a script and you want to make changes but you don't want to make changes to that script or you want to repurpose it for something else, this is where the CP command can be really useful. You can copy file name to new file name.xsf and you have a base script to work with or if you're editing a script that you're changing. Copying old internal memory to new internal memory, and on modular switcher, switches, copying files, old files onto flash or USB. Uh, some of the limitations, file names are case sensitive. I don't know if that's really a limitation, but it's something important to note. So you can have uppercase F file name and lowercase F file name, and it would be two separate files. Down to the limit areas of the XOS operating system. You only have access to the CF flash, USB, restricted internal memory locations, and OS flash. So there's only basically four places that you can copy to and from, and the rest of it is restricted. Move or the MV command. This command is important when moving files from local flash to CF flash, or to the, in the case of the Black Diamond 20K, to the USB. You can move files in order to rename them, primary to primary.back.cfg from primary.cfg. You can move files from internal memory to CF flash or USB. This can become important when you're moving core dump files or XML trace files off of the switch. File names are case sensitive. Again, uppercase F file and lowercase F file are two different files. When you rename a file with a given extension, you got to remember a couple of things. XML formatted configuration files have the .cfg extension. This means that the switch will recognize that those are configuration files that it can run and it will expect XML formatting. ASCII formatting con formatted configuration files have the .xsf file extension. This means the switch will know to execute this like a script. Policy files have the .pull extension and core dump files have the .gz extension. The RM, or the remove command, removes files from non-volatile memory. When you delete a file from the switch, there's going to be a message that's going to pop up and it's going to ask you a question, yes or no, whether you want to delete it. When you delete a file from the Extreme XOS OS, it is gone. File names are case sensitive. Again, F uppercase and F lowercase are two different files. So take care in which files you are actually removing when you use this command. Load script script name. It's a pretty important command. It's what enables you to run CLI scripts. The scripting output's disabled by default. You can enable CLI scripting output with the command enable CLI scripting output. It's disabled by default to silence the script output to the CLI. There are some cases when you might want to see that. An example of loading a script is on the slide at the last bullet, load script configure switch.xsf. Currently, you cannot call a script from within a script. However, in the future, this may be possible. In the next section, we're going to discuss variables. So let's get down to the root of it. 
What is a variable? It's a named container for data. In any scripting or coding language, you now know what a variable is. It's a named container for data whether it's Java, where it's sitting in the JVM memory space that it can reference, where it's in C, where you're doing either a pointer or a reference to an actual memory location, whether it's Extreme XOS, that it's a container within the Tickle engine that's got variable data in it for access. In short, it's a named container for data. What does it mean to XOS? It's a variable which is information accessible by XOS scripts and UPMs. So it's the named containers that scripting uses when it wants to make changes or it wants to interact it calls to these variables to do things how can they be used well scripts and UPMs can access them in command strings one example would be if you want to create a series of VLANs which we'll see this in later modules and some examples you can create a VLAN counter variable and then through scripting increment this counter so each time you create a VLAN the variable changes and you can create VLANs with four or five lines of code create thousands of them so variables are very powerful some limitations variables are defined within the session only one of the exceptions is system variables may be readable across sessions and something we'll cover later is there are some ways to make variables persistent but it's very limited in the hardware registers. Uh, global variables, variables with, it, with the exception of the save key and load key commands which we'll cover in later modules are not currently allowed in Extreme XOS. There are two types of variables in XOS user defined and system defined. System defined variables are variables that the operating system uses and defines and changes. The user defined are variables that are created in either universal port profiles or static scripts that a user or operator has created. There's a third type that is save key. This takes a variable and loads it into registers on the switch there are four registers available for this. This allows variables to survive reboots. It's a very limited use variable capability. However, the functionality for it is there. It is save key variable name variable and load key variable name variable. Predefined and system variables. Status CLI.user, CLI.session type. CLI.session underscore type is a type of session that you are currently in, be it XML, SSH, or Telnet. CLI.user is identifying the user who's executing that this CLI, and status is the status of the last command executed. That can be important when you're starting to do some error checking on commands. The CLI dot out. This is a very powerful system variable that we will come back to again in later slides. However, something to point out is as a one megabyte maximum size, and it captures the next CLI command executed. You must define this variable before it's used, and it is defined as follows: set var CLI dot out quote end quote or set var CLI dot out with a zero. It's recommended that you delete this variable after each additional after each use because it is a volatile command, meaning that if you run more commands at the CLI, it will capture them and will continue to change. You must enable CLI scripting before using these variables or executing a script.